All right, Superhuman fam, we got a good one today. So looking at the heights of all of the Mr. Olympia winners, did you know that the average Mr. Olympia winner stands only at five foot seven inches tall? Except for a few outliers like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lee Haney, and Ronnie Coleman, every single Mr. Olympia winner is actually shorter than the average American man. Now this got me thinking, is being short actually an advantage to building muscle faster or do short people simply just look more muscular? Now let's compare all these professional men's bodybuilders who had won Mr. Olympia and let's check out my boy Kevin Durant right here. Now Kevin Durant, one amazing basketball player, but he got a lot of publicity for not being able to bench press even 185 pounds. Standing at six foot nine and weighing 220 pounds, he was not able to bench press even 185 pounds. But just look at how long his arms are. Can you ever imagine his physique looking anything like any of these men's pro bodybuilders? Let's dive into the subject a little bit more. You ain't got no gains. You ain't got no weights. <laughs> What is going on guys, your shredded brother from another mother and welcome to episode number two. We're up to 14 days until Swomis. Now, I wanna start doing community debate videos. So I definitely wanna hear what you think of this in the comments below. I wanna start doing video topics that are maybe a little bit controversial, maybe not so black and white. And let's just start a friendly discussion in the comments below. So I've always thought that shorter people had an advantage with bodybuilding and with strength in general. So I was really trying to figure out the science behind this. Now, just logically speaking, say like, you know, in the intro you saw the Kevin Durant example, shorter people versus taller people. If you're six foot three and you have long arms, like I have really long arms. I got my wingspan checked yesterday and I have a six foot seven wingspan and I'm six foot one. So if say I'm trying to get huge arms, like big bulging biceps, um, I just basically have longer limbs. So the muscle that packs on my arm um, it's just not gonna pop. It's not gonna be like as dense and as full looking as a shorter limb. So think of a guy who has arms only this long up to mine. The muscle is just gonna pack on and it's gonna look more dense and thick and that person's gonna look a lot wider. Now, in every debate, there's obviously outliers. And the outliers are this, because I brush shoulders with a lot of really tall people who are also really big. In fact, if you go to a fitness expo, I know there's like Martin Ford, I think his name is. He's like six foot nine. Uh, Bradley Martin's fairly tall. He's like an inch taller than me when I met him. Simeon Pan is like around my height or maybe an inch taller. He's like 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 so there are exceptions. There are guys who are tall, who are super muscular, who look just crazy jacked. And I would say the exception to this rule is the 99 percentile genetic freaks. These are going to be the meso endo freaks, just like those, peer, those guys who literally just build muscle looking at a dumbbell. Like if you just watch Bradley Martin work out, he's freakishly strong. He has huge arms. He's just a genetic anomaly. Now, when it comes to strength, I do believe that being short is another huge advantage because if you're say bench pressing, squatting, deadlifting, the main powerlifting exercises, the weights are traveling in a shorter range of motion. So like there is a classic thing where Kevin Durant couldn't bench press 185 pounds at the NBA draft combine. Like if you look at how long his arms are versus someone who's like 5'7", his arms are like going all the way down here and then it's gotta lift the weight back all the way up here. It's such a long range of motion. Um, there's a guy that I've worked out with a few times at the gym here in LA and I think he's like the California state record um, bench press. Uh, he's like 485 pound bench press or something crazy and he's only like 100, um, like 95 pounds. But he's like, he's probably about this tall. Like, I don't know, he's like 5'4", five, 5'5". I don't know how tall this is, but he's about this tall. He's very short, so when he bench presses, he literally holds the bar way out here, and it's like his range of motion is like, it's literally like this, and he's going all the way down to his chest. Another thing too is if you look at Instagram fitness models, the people who have really popped on Instagram, for the most part, especially like the top of the top in men's physique, they typically tend to be short. In fact, almost all of the men's physique competitors that I know of that are at the like top of the top. Like I have um, Jeremy Buendia, super short. Uh, Jeremy Potvin, 
I saw him in person. I could not believe how small he looked in person. I think he's like five foot five or five foot six. And typically all of the men's physique competitors as well are very short. And I noticed this phenomenon in pictures. And when I went to the Elf Fleet event a couple years ago, I, I met a lot of people who I'd followed on Instagram. And like, I thought they were huge because like they take, they're, first of all, they're very short. A lot of these guys are like five foot five to five foot nine. And they're taking pictures at like an upward angle with a great pump with great lighting. And then once again, they have shorter limbs so their muscles are packing on much tighter. And then in person, I could not believe the difference that they look. So it's like in person versus in pictures, I think there's a pretty big difference between how a tall person and a short person looks. So one of the most common things when you search this topic online is that short guys are more likely to get into bodybuilding and even more likely to take anabolic steroids because you know being tall is one of the biggest signs of masculinity. So basically the theory is that if you're shorter, you're more likely to compensate by getting into bodybuilding. Now, this isn't to call out anybody. This is just what I'm reading. I want to hear what you guys think of this in the comments below. But you know, the thing is we're all born with certain advantages and disadvantages. And we just gotta double down on our strengths and accept our weaknesses. And that's what, you know, really makes this a world an amazing place. Like if you think, do you think if Kevin Hart was six foot three, he'd be the biggest comedian in the world? I kind of don't think so. I guarantee you he used a lot of that, that he's shorter as motivation to, uh, you know, really drive his career forward. So if you are a taller guy, you're probably not going to ever be a pro bodybuilder, but not to worry because guess what? Most people typically just want to have that ripped athletic look, what I call the athletic aesthetic look. And I would much rather look like a shredded pro athlete than a huge pro bodybuilder any day of the week. And that's really what this content on this channel is all about. So, you know, regardless of if you're six foot five, if you're seven foot eight watching this video, you can have a very impressive looking physique. And if you're five foot eight, five foot nine, guess what? You hit the genetic lottery for bodybuilding. You may not be a pro basketball player, unless you're like Spud Webb or, or Boykins, but you did hit the genetic lottery for bodybuilding. So just own it and do you and make some gains. So that is it for today's video. If you guys missed episode number one, I'm gonna link that into the description below and I will see you guys on the video tomorrow.